So now, how uh, you, can somebody tell me about any other many to many relationship? Price, book, uh, and uh, product. Perfect. Absolutely. There is only one person who is studying. Guys, you are misusing your money. So, <clears throat> what is the name of the child? Price, price tree. Price, no, child object. Uh, price book and uh, price book entry. Price book entry. So, how many lookups will that have? Two. Two. Lookups from which objects? Price, price, price book and product. Perfect. Absolutely. Simple. So, how will this table look like? If this is accountable, this is contactable. Every object or every table of Salesforce will have a ID column, or this is called a field. Salesforce will generate the values for every row of this cell. Okay. Every column. So ID will also be there in contact table. It will be there in account table. Every table will have an ID column. ID means what? Identifier. Identifier means how do we identify this whole record? Right? So if it is a it is account one, A1, A2, this is C1, C2. Right? This identifier is a 13 character case sensitive or a 18 character case insensitive alphanumeric number auto generated by Salesforce. We have no control over it. There are two versions of the same field. So if you are using eight, 13 characters, you can use 18 characters, both. Salesforce will allow you to use any of the versions. What is case sensitive version? Case sensitive means capital A and small a are different characters. When it is case insensitive, in which capital A and small a will be considered the same character. Okay, that is only difference. Since the combinations using capital A, uh, letters and small letters is larger, that is why we only need 13 characters to make it unique. But since we are not using capital letters and small letters to mark it as a different character, so we need a lot more characters to make it unique across this, this organization. So this ID will only be available on one table's one ID, and that's it. It will never be there in any other table. So the identifier of that whole row is called the primary key. Primary key of that table. Okay. So this is the primary key of account table. This is the primary key of uh, the, the contact table, right? Now, if primary key is used in another table, primary key of this table is used in another table, like in contact, that that field is called a lookup field or a master detail field. That means, what are we storing in lookup or master detail? We are storing this 18 characters or a 13 character ID. Okay. In the table. Let's see it in a little more details. What is the mandatory field of account? Did somebody create an account? Name. Name. Very good. 
so id so if it is account 1 this is account 2 and a1 a2 are the ids auto created by salesforce now in contact table i have c1 c2 what are the mandatory fields of contact anybody created any contacts in salesforce name name is the whole name mandatory or part of it mandatory last name last name absolutely right. so what is what is that shobhanjit ghosh on image vanity so maybe shobhanjit ghosh is not required so ghosh is enough and banerjee is enough right first time you can give or last you can not give it doesn't matter but how will i know this contact belong this contact is this contact of account a and this contact is of account b or account 1 or account 2 here i have a lookup column called account id wherein i will copy this value and put it here i will copy this value and put it here and it is quite easy right this contact is of account 2 this contact is of account 1 any confusion till now no yeah let's see this in salesforce how it looks like so what will happen if uh, there is a child of two parents two lookup fields will carry this same id okay let's see this in salesforce <clears throat> this is damn easy i think you're not giving enough time for it to get into your head we'll see this how easy it is it's fun So I am in Salesforce, right? I am in accounts. How many accounts are there in this whole organization? There are 15 accounts. These are the fields I can see. Okay. I can go ahead and select fields to display. I can change which fields to display, which field not to display. I can take out some. Definitely. This is not required. I can change, bring it forward, bring it backward. This I can do. Okay. But the ID field is not available, right? I can create that ID field if it needed. It, it ID field is already there in the background, background. So for you, it is very required because you will be loading data in bulk. You will not be creating one, one accounts like this. Yeah. We'll see that. Let's see. And same with contacts. How many contacts are there? 24 contacts, right? So let's see. How can I see behind the scenes what is happening in the database? Let's see that. So there is a link called workbench.developerforce.com. Okay. If we go there, and we have this opened as a separate Salesforce is opened as a separate tab in Chrome, then it will not ask for your login. It can just ask you for allowing and go ahead. So what will happen? You can do query, SOQL query or jump to that object. This SOQL query. What is this? This query will give allow us to see in the database what is happening. So I will go to account. Here, account I have. Select. 
this is the query builder you don't have to learn the query how to create a query like this you can type it if you are quite advanced if you know what what needs to be done but for now let us assume we do not know anything about a sql query how to generate data so what we see all the fields are listed here you see if you change this automatically it generates the query for you so let's see this what i need i need the id see there is a field called id i also need another column which is the name column so i will hold on to control key and select name then both are selected select id name from account run it now see 15 accounts comes in these are all these 15 accounts which we were seeing here same this whole list but right now i can see the ids you see this id this is the salesforce generated id how many characters are there 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 18 character version you are seeing yeah in workbench every account has a 18 character id yeah can i download yeah in excel file yes i can here is a bulk csv salesforce only works with csv file csv file means comma separated values okay comma separated values files ca dot csv files will open in excel we'll see that so now i do the query once again and there is this download button and now this gets downloaded in my machine yeah i will rename this to account and right click open with microsoft excel see this is a simple account table with id and name you can select other columns if you select other columns this this will be filled up i don't need to worry about other columns right now the basic columns i will use id and name that is very important for me okay now can i add new accounts in salesforce without without going ahead and creating it one by one like i want to create 15 more accounts at one shot can i do that i will not go 15 times in hit in the new 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 i don't want to do that you are an admin you have ability to create multiple accounts at once once you can that is the job of the administrator why will you need this because probably you are moving from data from an existing crm or old crm system to salesforce then all these accounts has to be recreated right in the salesforce so you have to load all the whole data into salesforce i will load all your existing accounts into salesforce yeah so now let's see this what i am doing on this table i am doing a read operation on this table right here this is a read operation i am getting all the read i am reading all the table rows of account right how can i do a create what are the basic operations possible in any table anybody wants to give a try in any table what can we you do in any table or any object there are only four basic operations read that means reading every row of that table create edit and delete we call this cred or crad operations simple instead of edit if you say update it's the same so create read edit 
delete crad operation or crad operation can be only possible in a table that's it a salesforce admin can do these operations in bulk what does it mean bulk means lot of data at once you don't have to individually create records you don't have to individually read records you don't have to individually edit records you have don't have to individually delete records a system administrator has the ability to do all these operations on multiple records at one shot a normal user or a normal business user will always be doing these operations on one object at a time or sorry one record at a time clear any confusion so let's see how are can we do i i we only saw using the workbench we are doing a read operation uh on the whole table now let's see how can i do a recreate operation on that whole table so now i want to create new accounts can i do that yes very easy let's save this right click i will duplicate this and i will say new very easy now open it with excel right now i will all remove this rows because i want to create it i want to just keep the columns that's why i duplicated it i don't want to retype it again okay so here i say account 1 15 15 accounts i want to create now tell me one thing do i need to fill the id for creation no it's auto generated so it is auto generated by salesforce that means these characters are created by salesforce so there is no need to give any id for this operation so let's see now how can we generate this account so let's go to workbench here in the data i will go to insert i will select the account object from file choose file account new next the mapping or it has to be done the columns of this excel sheet needs to be mapped with the fields of salesforce if the name is exact match salesforce automatically maps it you see name is already mapped here but is not exact map there is a space or there is something else in that case you have to manually select this mapping you see in this excel sheet there is only two columns id and name automatically salesforce has mapped the name field and name field is in red because this is a mandatory field you have to select it these are the other fields of account table which you are not mapping it's completely blank does not map so i map so now i i can see i can i have only mapped one because that is a mandatory field nothing else is mandatory i do insert you see so many records are created and a salesforce id has also been generated for that right now let's do the query once again id and name bulk csv let me download this once again i will download it once again i will delete this old file and rename this as account now let's see this old file see my table now has these old, were existing values and these are the new values and salesforce has automatically generated id for that can i see that in salesforce let's go here this was the old screen right let me refresh this screen see now this accounts has also got created this was the old accounts and there are total 30 accounts now 15 new i created these are the new ones so easy right 
what do i do with contacts can i create new contacts this way how many contacts were there 24 contacts let me go and download contacts let's create a contact first right from scratch can i do that can we create a contact file from scratch let me do that from scratch how can i do that i will go where is my excel anyway excel is opened here i will close this file blank workbench if i want to create contacts what is the mandatory field last name correct so let's let me give first name one last name one and i will create 20 contacts this is the header row and these are the data rows okay don't get confused on that so the, this is the header and this is the data this will be loaded the top row is only for mapping what is needed a, a, apart from that hmm? id which id contact id contact id do i need contact id for uh, loading uh, creating contacts no it's auto generated but uh, why why do i need that field okay. what else is required anything else we are missing out this is a child object right oh yeah the account uh, account i uh, account name account name no account oh, name right. okay let's see what is happening in the account side we showed this right already so if you go there object manager when you are working with this excel sheets you will only use the api side what is that there are in the fields there is a field label and a field name if you go to the contact go to each field there is a field label this this label will show up in the screen in the page layout this is exactly what you will use when you are working with your excel sheets okay this is very vital to understand you see what is account name is basically the field name is account id because it is it is a lookup field it is storing that 18 character right mm -hmm. but when what happens by salesforce when you go to contact open this any contact this is the account name field it is showing up because salesforce automatically converts that id field into name and become a uh, shows is a hyperlink so you can click this and you go directly go to app so any field if you are seeing a hyperlink most probably that's a lookup field in salesforce okay and lookup field means it is storing in the background it is storing the id it is not storing this flow test okay salesforce is automatically converting the uh, the the foreign key uh, and from that table it is getting the name and it is replacing it and then automatically giving a hyperlink that is how it salesforce works because on screen if i have 18 character here how will i know which account is it is it possible even to work with uh, 18 characters unusable right in order to make it easy for users to understand this id belongs to which account salesforce automatically replaces this id with name name of which from the table from which this key is the primary key that's why the field call is called name so that people are not confused but actually we are storing ids in the background right now how will i create contacts under this account flow test account there are two two contacts already but this 20 accounts i want to create under this account
Load test account. Do I have that in my Excel sheet? Let's let's see that. This is my account sheet, right? It opened here. Float is, float is, yes, float is, is there. This is the ID, right? Let's copy this. Let's make this first 10 accounts. belong to this side, this account. Let's choose another account. How do I do it? So I will copy that from my account or I can go to this account. I can copy this from here also. This is the same ID in the URL. Yeah. So let's see, let's select another account. SPV is another account. Let me copy this from here this time. Control C. Just create another account. So what happened? This is a different account. This is a different account. So this 10 contacts will come under this account. And these 10 contacts will come under this account. And what is the name of the field? Okay. Save it. Under downloads, I will select contact new this will not be excellence it will be csv you see comma delimited csv or comma separate values this one say i didn't catch that could you try again so now i have created this lot let us me go back to workbench. Insert. This time I will go to contact. Choose file. Contact new. Next, how many columns I have to map? You see, the name is exactly similar that Salesforce has automatically mapped. Only this one is the red because this is mandatory. Account ID is not mandatory. Please notice this. So, wait, if I map this field, these are the three columns I map. Confirm insert. Created. Let me test it. See, so many contacts got created. You all. 11 to 20 got created under this account. account. And a flow test. And uh, test, flow test under flow test 1 to this 1 to 10 uh, contacts are created under this account. Any confusion, guys, till now? Quite easy, right? You will be able to do it? Yes. Yes. Please do this. It is the data session is very important. We mm -hmm. are working with data right now. We are working with bulk data. That is very critical to understand. Give me one second. My laptop is dying. So now we have seen what is the operation called create or insert, right? Same create, read two operations we have seen. What if I want to change the name of this accounts? Yeah, let's go to this account. 
there are this how many so many accounts i created right one to hundred one to ten i want to rename these accounts to like it should start from 100 to 110 not 101 account names should start from 100 so i want to change that right what will i do let's open that same read file this time i don't need contacts i need the accounts this is a complete set of account right open with excel sheet these are the complete set of accounts i have right i want to change these accounts maybe i want to add a zero after everything All done. These accounts I don't want to touch. So I don't need this in my Excel sheet. Delete. So I want to update only this set. Do I need ID or not for updation? If I don't have ID, is there a problem? Uh, I think we required the ID because. Um against that particular id only the account name will be edited so absolutely if i want to change any any record or make any change on a record first i have to tell him which record i am changing right this id field is the unique identifier of that record if i don't have this field and i just only supply this do i know which uh, which name am i changing so previous value what the Excel sheet can have anything, right? But how do I know I am changing? How will Salesforce know that this row is basically an update of account 12? This row is an update of the account 13. There is no way Salesforce can identify it, right? There's right. no identifier, no pointers to tell them. So in order to tell Salesforce, see this first row is account 120, which I'm giving is basically this ID, this is the ID you generated for your record. That record's old name is account 12. Right? So I don't need to provide them an old value and new value. And I don't, there is no confusion about duplications because in Salesforce, the name field can be duplicate. There can be two accounts with account 12, account 12. Then which one will I change? Right? Which one will sales for change? It will not know. But if there will be always a unique identifier, that means if we supply this, we tell if they, there are five account 12s also, I am telling only this account 12 we are going to change. Correct? So ID field is very, very important and crucial for any kind of update operation. So now I go and do the same in Workbench. This time I will go to update. Which object account? From which file? Did I save this file? Yeah, I saved. Next. See, ID is mandatory this time because Salesforce wants it. Name field is also mandatory. Have field. Confirm update. Access. Let's see if this got changed. Yeah, all got changed. So if you want to change other values, only that in this Excel sheet, you have to add all those columns and update. Simple. Okay. Similarly, there can be a delete operation. Okay, before delete, I will go to upset. What is upset? Any ideas? Both update and insert. Correct, absolutely. So how I can do update and insert at one shot? Is it even possible? Yes, it is possible. If I have this account, 1000, and maybe I have 
10 values more and I save this file and I do a up, upsert operation here now. This is the ID field and name field, right? Both I'm providing. If the ID is blank, then Salesforce will treat it as an insert operation. Okay, so you see these these are this is where I have provided IDs. So it, it updated, and these are these where I did not provide any ID, that's why it was created. So I will go to account and see all accounts. This time I can see 1000, 1001, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. This also got created. So at one shot, you are creating and updating in the same file. That is upset. Similarly, you can do delete. For delete, you don't have to choose the record. You just select these accounts. And next, only ID is required, nothing else is required. Map this. There is an option to permanently hard, hard delete record. What does it mean? Hard, permanent deletion means by default, when you are deleting right now, it is going to recycle bin. Salesforce also has its own recycle bin. It keeps the record for some days there, and then it deletes it. You can recover it. We'll show that how, but you cannot recover it if you would do a permanent, in, in, say, in computer, if you do a shift delete, then you cannot, it does not go to recycle bin, right? Similarly, in Salesforce, it's the same story. So if I do a confirm delete, all these records got deleted. So now let's see. The thousand rows are there, but Baki accounts got deleted. Right? Can I recover it back? I can recover it because I have the undelete operation. I choose the same file. Map fields, confirm, undelete. Go back to Salesforce, refresh. See, these accounts are back 10, 100, these 110, 10, these things. These are again back. The last operation in this registry is purge. Purge is cleaning up the recycle bin. So, can I purge now? Anybody? What will happen if I do a purge now? Confirm purge. No recycle bin entry find. Why? Because I have undeleted these right now. Anna, it is back. There is nothing in the recycle bin. So I have to first delete it. Purge means a confirm delete. That's it. Hard delete. Map fields. Confirm delete. This is deleted now. Now I can go ahead and purge. The same file. Next. Map fields. Confirm purge. That means it is moved, removed from recycle bin. Now I cannot undelete this file. If I go and undelete, what it will show up? It is gone from the recycle bin. See, entity not in the cycle bin, undelete fail. Clear all operations on data? Mm, yes. Any confusion till now? Mm, no. no. Now, one thing to recollect here is that it is very complicated. When I, up, I am uploading co contact, it is very complicated, right? I have to bring the ID from my parent put it on my sheet, and then I have to upload it, right? Very complicated process. So when I'm doing that load in many huge number of data, that whole process is very complicated, right? Let's see a situation. Can I simplify this process? So let's see, let's remove these accounts. Let's uh, take a situation like this. I want to insert new account 
one i want to insert 10 accounts i want to also insert on 20 contacts here first name last name account id that is required right these two things are required so in account i have these accounts id is not required uh, in contacts i have the first name last name and account so in first name maybe i will put first name Maybe I want to create 10 accounts and each account should have this ID. So how many times I have to go first insert these accounts, then go back to this, uh, retrieve this, take out the ID from this, paste it here, then I can upload the contact. I want to avoid this. Can I avoid this? I want to create my own ID. And I say, my ID is A1. 18 and here i want to use my these account ids here. this is i want to load will that work what do you think Let me store this first as an Excel sheet. Please note, if you are saving in CSV file, multiple tabs cannot be saved. This is my Excel sheet, which has multiple tabs. Now I will create one by one my, my CSVs. Can I load my ID into Salesforce ID? Let's see. I go, will Salesforce allow me? Here my workbench. Okay, first let's clear the CSV files. Right click, move or copy. New book, create a copy. Save as my accounts. This CSV. So I will now save my accounts. I will do the same here, move or copy, new book, create a copy, save as CSV, my contacts. So now I have individually exported this CSV files. It's all good. Now I'm happy, I can load. Let's go ahead and load. I will go and insert accounts. First, let's choose account object. Choose file, my accounts. Next. So ID field, is not there at all. So I cannot load my ID field. So let me create a new ID field. I will go to object manager, go to account in field and relationships. Let me create a new field, which is a text field.
it's called my height. Length is 255 characters, that's the maximum length. I can make it unique. I should make it unique. And I have to mark this as external IDs. Okay, why? I will show you that. This field set is a unique record identifier from an external system. I have created myself, or you can also export it from any other system. Maybe the old CRM system. Make it visible. Add it on the page layout. Okay, so my ID field is now created. Okay, you see underscore underscore C signifies that this is a custom field. Okay, text field unique case insensitive. That is small a and capital A is is will be treated as same. Okay. So I have to cancel this open workbench once again. Otherwise, I will not get this field. This time I will insert once again. I will select one account once again. I will select my accounts. This time I will now load the name is automatically matched. And see my ID. I will select my ID. Why Salesforce did not load it? Because this is a name this is different. You see underscore underscore C is there, but in my column underscore underscore C was not there. That's why it did not recognize. I am mapping this to fill and confirm insert. So now I have created some accounts. Let's see those accounts. Yeah. So that accounts I have created. This is the new accounts where I have my ID field filled, filled up. Let's see that field. There is a my ID field now. You see here, my ID file ID is filled up on this account. Now I will go to the workbench. I want to now insert contact. Choose five. This is my contact. Next. Account ID is mapped to account ID. First name, last name, all mapped. Account ID in the account ID, I have provided my IDs. Confirm insert. Will this work? Salesforce will not allow it because it is expecting an 18 character value. So it is rejecting my values. So what is the alternate? How do I tell Salesforce to use my ID instead of Salesforce ID? I choose my contact. In account ID, I have not provided Salesforce ID. I have provided my ID. I have to tell Salesforce. So I will have a smart lookup wherein I will tell the exact field value I am providing in account ID. So I am saying, Please, in this CSV field, in this uh, basically uh, column, I have provided my ID values. Please replace this with Salesforce IDs and insert it. So Salesforce will automatically show, see this value, replace this value and insert that and put it in account ID. So confirm insert, it is now success. So if I go now, to contacts, these contacts are now connected to the new accounts. So it becomes so easy now, right? Because I don't have to now go back, hunt my 15, 18 character value from Salesforce. I have completely avoided that whole step. I have used my own ID and I have created the relationships between contact and account. So my data loading becomes very easy, very simple. I can do whatever I want to do by using external ID field. Clear guys? Yeah. So instead of using Salesforce ID, you can use external ID 
and Salesforce automatically convert that external ID into Salesforce ID and put it in the lookup or master detail table. Okay. Lookup table is what we saw in today's exercise. Master detail is exactly the same, no difference. Only difference is every master detail field is mandatory. So you have to provide a value. You cannot upload without filling up the mandatory fields. Uh, the lookup uh, master detail column. Clear? That is all about data today. I think you have to go ahead and practice this, thoroughly practice this. Because what I found out, you are not even seeing the videos. If you do not practice, you do not see the videos. There will be more and more complicated things which is coming up next. So you will come be completely lost. So it is very, very vital that you spend time with Salesforce. Salesforce will reward you big time. But if you are not, not spending time with Salesforce, you are missing out big time, big time. It is not very difficult. It is very, very easy. But for understanding these easy things, you have to give time. If you do not give time, you cannot understand. My videos are highly informative. These videos are jam-packed with information. And that is the reason you have to see it multiple times. Go forward, run it multiple times. All the information will be at your fingertips. You don't even have to read the and read any other documents. Trailhead is a must. Trailhead is a practice session. So watching my videos again and again and doing the trailhead is very, very crucial for you to understand Salesforce. Please be ahead in the game. Otherwise, when the complicated stuffs are coming up next, it would be very difficult for you to understand what is going on. Okay. If you face any problem, any confusion, Always the chat is open. Please put your questions. If needed, you can you can call me, your mentor, and they are they are to help you out. Any questions so far in today's session? Uh, I just uh, have one question regarding where we are creating our own ID. Mm -hmm. Like uh, where to use? Like, can you give one example? Like. Um, how it can be beneficial in the long run, like where we can use our own ID or something. So when we are creating data loading, right? In child mm -hmm. objects, mm -hmm. you have to get the Salesforce ID of the, your parent records, right? Right, right. That is a tedious job. How will mm -hmm. you get that? You it's have to go like to the code, yeah. download that data, fetch the Salesforce mm -hmm. ID, paste it in your child, in your object, and then only you can load it, right? Mm -hmm. The whole whole this process can be avoided if you have your own ID. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I need to practice to get yeah. a hold of yeah. Yeah. Please note that uh, apart from Workbench, you can do data loading using other systems also. Uh, in Trailhead, there are import wizards that has been discussed. So please go through that. I am not going through that right now it's quite easy you will go to import wizard this is the data import wizard you can load data using import wizard also so it's the same account and contact you select add new records this csv you can drag and drop your csv or you can go and choose file account new next this is the mapping you have to do. Uh, this mapping is ID. ID field is need not be mapped. Name field should be mapped to account name. Next, one map field, start input. This will go into batch. So it is a bulk insert, okay? So as soon as this is done, view results. Records processed, no records fails. So it is now all successful, successfully created. So data import wizard can be utilized. Uh, then you have a data loader also. This one. So you can download data loader on your machine, download data loader for Windows. This is a exe file. You have to log in, user ID, password. 
which you do not have right now. I will show you that. What you can do is that you can go to user and create a new user, put some values, put a, a your email ID and username should be a little different to what, uh, just put your e email ID here only. And you do that and then you save it. In your email ID, a new user ID password will come, select it, confirm it, and then you can use it for loading data. Select user license will be Salesforce, profile will be system administrator, that's it. Only fill up this red mark fields. So you put it your name, this will automatically generate email ID you have to put, email username, nickname will be automatically generated. So you don't have to do it and then save, finish. In that case, you can directly go to login.salesforce.com. Directly use, use user, this user ID and password, you can log into the same trailer, sorry, same playground. You don't need to launch it from this playground. Clear? Hmm. Please practice, very vital. Otherwise, it will not be clear to you. Theory knowledge is not enough. Mm -hmm. Okay. At least it's very, very crucial. Practice again and again. Try to fail. Try to do one sorts of nonsense on this Salesforce org. You cannot break this. Do whatever you want to do. Till now, whatever we have discussed in class, only do that. Mm -hmm. If you are ahead in the game, if you are ahead in the trailhead, of course, complete that also. Try to practice that also. But minimum, whatever we have completed in a class. What did we complete till now? We have shown you how to create fields. We have shown you how to load data. These two things, I think you can go ahead and practice. You should practice. Very easy things, right? Creating new fields and loading data. That is what we discussed till now in two sessions. But this elementary and this is very, very basic, very, very important. If you are not too clear about these, it hardly any there is any point in going to next day's uh, talks. Yeah, please, please have uh, like practice, practice, and practice. You are facing any problem, hit out to the manage uh, to the mentor, call out to Shobhan. If both are not available, call me up after two o'clock. I am also available. Okay, guys, I will stop the session today and we'll let you do all your practice session. Thanks a lot for joining the call. Yeah, do not do one thing you are.